this video we're going to look at some relationships between a binomial distribution and a normal distribution. This is remarkable because a binomial distribution is a discrete distribution and a normal distribution is a continuous distribution. Remember that in a binomial distribution we'll conduct a number of trials. In each case the probability of success is p and the probability of failure is q which will always be 1 minus p. We repeat the trial a number of times. Each time the probability of success is p and the probability of failure is q. The number of trials n is called the size of the binomial. We could calculate the probability of following any of these uh, trails through the binomial. Suppose in the, in the first case we had a failure, then a success, and all the rest of them were failures. The probability then of uh, for that particular path is p to the first power times q to the n minus 1 powers. Uh, but there are other ways that we could have exactly one uh, success. We could have followed up this trail, uh, one success, and then all the rest of them were failures. We could have quite a number of failures, one success, and the rest failures, and so on. So to actually calculate the, the probability of having exactly one success, we need to add up all of the the, we, we have to multiply by the number of times that we could have exactly one success by passing through this, uh, the paths on this binomial tree. That's a well-known formula to all of you. The probability of a given number of successes uh, comes from knowing the probability of success is p, the probability of failure of q, 1 minus p, for the number of trials we find the probability of exactly k successes by counting up the combinations of choosing from n k things and then p to the k, that's the successes of, of exactly k successes uh, times the probability of the, of the n minus k failures. Uh, that combination formula is well known and it's uh, given here. The nice thing is that R can calculate that probability. The D binome, the density of the binomial function, actually calculates that formula. Plotting the binom uh, so therefore we could then plot the binomial distribution by taking advantage of that particular function. Here's the idea. We'll build a vector that, ha that uh, has the values 0 up to 25, say. And then we'll look at the density of the D binome of that vector. For each one of those values, we'll find the probability of getting exactly that score in a binomial distribution of size 20 and a probability of 30, say then we could plot that amount. Let's copy this and put it into an R console and see what it looks like. Here I've pulled up an R console. Here we're copying and pasting those commands into uh, to the R console. When we run the command, we get these uh, vertical lines associated with each probability. So the probability of getting five in this case is a little bit more than 10%. Probability of getting six is around 15 percent, and so on. Another nice feature of R is that you can build new functions. So let's build a function that plots the binome. We'll call it plot binome. Here's the syntax for building functions. You tell it that you're going to build a function and what the inputs are. You name the function. These squiggly brackets. Between those squiggly brackets is the action of the function. So this function will have inputs of n and p for the size of the binomial and for the probability of success. We'll build that sequence just like we did before. We'll build the density uh, 
and then we'll plot these. We've added a couple other things here. We've used this command before, so we had vertical lines in the plot. We're going to in enlarge the width of the lines. The line width will be increased. The color will be red, and we'll add a, a heading and a footer to that information. Here's our, our console again. We will copy and paste. So now we have this new function called plot binome. Let's try plotting uh, the binomial distribution with the size of 20 and the probability of 30. Run that command in the R console. And we get much the same plot that we had before. We've got some added bells and whistles. The N is 20, the probability is 30%, and now the lines are, are a little thicker and plotted in red. The nice thing about a binomial distribution, it is, of course, a relative frequency distribution, so we could calculate the mean and standard deviation the same way that we do for any relative frequency distribution. As it turns out, the mean of a binomial distribution is going to be n times p, and the standard deviation of a binomial distribution is going to be the square root of n times p times q. So what we'd like to do is, is look at a normal distribution with that mean and standard deviation and compare that to the binomial distribution. We'll make that comparison by building another function. We'll call it plot norm binome. Again, it will have the inputs of the size of the binomial distribution and p. You'll notice this first part is actually just replotting the binomial distribution as we did earlier. Then we calculate what the mean is and what the standard, uh, what q is and what the standard deviation is. And then we'll plot the normal distribution in a dark blue on that same plot. So let's put that into an R console. Here's our R console again. I'll copy and paste. So now we've defined this new function, plot norm binome. Let's uh, look and see what that produces. Again, we'll look at a binomial distribution with size of 20 and a probability of 30. When we run that command, we get the same curve that we had before, the, the, the same red bars that we had before. And now we've got this normal distribution kind of imposed on that. Notice that normal distribution pretty much follows um, these, uh, these other values fa uh, fairly closely. One of the things that I want you to notice is that P times N is uh, is about a six. Uh, Q times n is is much more than five. We'll look at that at the end of this discussion. I'd like to have a little more wiggle room for the next part of the discussion, so I'm going to run the p binome of size ten with the relative. Now a couple things to notice here is that n times p is only three now not greater than 5. And notice that we're kind of slipping off with a little bit greater air in some of these. But I'm going to use this picture to, to discuss how the normal distribution can approximate. Um, but, and later on, we're going to discover that a good approximation need to have n times p greater than or equal to 5 and n times q greater than or equal to 5. Now the problem with approximating a binomial distribution, see uh, uh, this binomial distribution at two say is something between 0.2, the probability of getting exactly two is somewhere between uh, 0.2 and 0.25. Uh, but the probability of getting exactly two in a normal distribution because it's a continuous distribution is zero. The probability of getting any specific value in a continuous distribution is going to be zero. 
So we need to find some way of, of relating this discrete probability distribution to this continuous probability distribution. The way to do that is as follows. Let's look at this probability of getting two. If we came to, to 1.5 and 2.5, the distance between those is one. Now, if we created a rectangle that had that width of one and this height, then the area of that green rectangle would in fact be the same as the height of that rectangle. So the area of this green rectangle really is calculating the probability of getting exactly two. So build one of those width one rectangles for each one of these heights. Then if we were interested in finding the probability of getting a two or less in the binomial distribution, we'd need to add up this amount plus this amount plus this amount. Have to add up those three. If we wanted to use the binomial distribution to approximate that same probability, then we'd look at 2.5, the area less than 2.5 in the normal distribution. Now one thing that we'll observe later on is that for this to be a good approximation, n times p and n times q both need to be greater than one half. That's not the case here. Uh, n times p is not greater than, than uh, 0.5 and you can see that this is kind of poking up there a little bit more. If, if this had been, if this had matched closer to the normal distribution, then you'd notice that this area that the normal distribution adds to the area when we go from 2.5 down, and this area that it misses would be very, very close to the same size. In this case, they're quite a bit off, so the, the estimation is not going to be, be quite as good. But that's the idea, is if you wanted to find the probability, if you wanted to use the normal distribution to approximate the area less than, to calculate the probability of getting two or less in the binomial distribution, then you would look at the normal distribution from 2.5 down. And there's the final observation. We now learned how to use the normal distribution to approximate. And we know when it's a good approximation is when n times p is greater than 5 and n times q is, is also greater than 5. Uh, when that's the case, then the normal distribution can ap approximate the binomial distribution if we wanted to find the probability of getting a score of k or less in a normal in a binomial distribution of size n with a probability of p, then we could approximate it with the p norm at k plus 0 0.5, so that we're going up and catching that rectangle. Uh, the mean of n times uh, a mean, so it's the mean of that binomial distribution and the standard deviation of the standard deviation binomial distribution. Okay, that's the idea.